Welcome to Marketplace for Sellers. Today, we're doing our Super Seller Sunday, and we are being joined by Marcus Silva, who is one of our group experts, an amazing man who uh, whom I met a while back ago. And as I uh, watch the people on, on our group and we communicate with each other, he really stood out to me as a, uh, a person of interest. And I've become friends with him. And I'm super excited to start our Super Seller Sunday with you. Uh, Marcus, uh, do you want to tell us a little bit about yourself? Sure. Um, yeah, thanks for thanks for asking me to chat. So when I was three, I lived at home. And so, <laughs> yeah. um, and if some of these jokes sound a little bad, uh, Lisa and I had a, had a false start yesterday. And so we're at take two or take five or something like that now. So Yes, we uh, are on take two mode because we got everything done. And just so you know, it was amazing. <laughs> so we're hoping that today will be just as amazing as yesterday. But, um, you know, because he had some pretty good jokes. Go ahead. Well, I'll, I'll give it a try. Um, <laughs> so I started in the Facebook marketplace shipping world towards the beginning of the year. And to kind of go backwards a little bit more, my wife and I started COVID crafting. Right. We all, my wife had a vinyl maker, a cricket and come COVID, when COVID started, I was working at home more. She was working. Um, she works at home. And so I started getting into it. I sold locally for a while, uh, making uh, anywhere from etched glass to vinyl decals. Then I had the shipping option opened up to me. And so I started selling some, some decals uh, through Facebook marketplace with the shipping option opened up for nationwide. And that blew up. I couldn't even keep up. Um, I was selling more decals than I had time time to deal with. So I had dabbled in uh, drop shipping unsuccessfully in the past. So I knew of it. I kind of knew what it was. Decided to kind of get back into it. Uh, I don't really remember whose group it was that I think I kind of learned a little bit to use a retail supplier and, and how that worked. I got started and it's taken off. And I've done, by all means, I'm probably not a little humbled with the expert title, but uh, it's I I feel for myself and my goals uh, have been been successful and, and done well with that or done done well with it in the last uh, I don't know what are we at eight months now or so so um, on my I do work a day job so I have a full time day job um, I'm a sales rep for a, a regional internet provider um, and on top of that I have six kids so. This was all, yeah, a little bit. This was all around trying to find something for additional income um, with only having a couple hours a night available to support it. I think that was- And you were able to work with your wife, which is such a bonus. Not everybody's able to do that. You seem to really enjoy it. I know that, she's really the heart of all of that for you. That was huge. So although we do our separate things now, at the time we were really needing something, something to do that was just her and I without the kids, you know, it wasn't focused around the kids. And so we would stay up until 10, 11 o'clock at night. She making her own stuff. She does really well on with her crafts. I was making my stuff, but we were there together doing something together that didn't have to do with the kids at the time. And um, because of COVID, no, you know, it was pretty stressful time it still is. That was a real thing that allowed us to connect with an activity that wasn't based around the kids. So yeah, it was pretty cool. Now, now I do my own thing. She's kind of on a downturn where she's taking some time to not doing it, but she's ramping up for Christmas and so am I. So. Oh yeah. We all have to be ramping up for Christmas with everything. In fact, I remember uh, about a week ago, I, I posted, we need to all be front loading our websites with Christmas. Last Christmas, we were COVID Christmas and I I did pretty good. I, I can't complain. I, I know you said you did pretty good too, right? Yes. I want to back up a little bit because I know that you do drop shipping, but you started off selling stickers. To me, that's fascinating because we actually do have quite a few people that sell products from their home and don't drop ship. As far as drop shipping goes, it's it's such a an amazing business. And I do both. I do both handheld products and I also yeah. drop ship. Yeah. I, that's I like, how we met kind of is yes that's exactly <laughs> that's how we met so for me i love it uh i love the drop shipping but i also uh, have total respect for the game of going out and finding products and and even for those that make it my mom sells uh, quilt patterns she actually 
designs and makes the quilt patterns. Mm -hmm. And so I'll sell her quilt patterns online for her. And she has a, a huge Etsy shop. She's like one of the top 1% sellers in Etsy. Oh, wow. She's amazing. So for you to, to take and make, you know, stickers, is is really is really interesting and one of the things that i wanted to talk about and we talked about it in the previous uh in the take one video yeah. <laughs> that's our new joke um i kind of want to talk about that because the takeaways from that to me are so huge on on what you were able to see and and how you were able to develop a strategy from that can you tell us a little bit about that story and how how that evolved sure so uh when i first started selling stickers i was only selling in the local local buy sell groups just just local and i did did well you know i had enough to keep me busy but that started to slow down and i realized why am i limited this facebook is global why am i limited to just selling and I live in a in a pretty small community in, in Southern Oregon, and so it's it's kind of you know, I was I, it wasn't tapped, but I felt like I wasn't expanding the, as fast as I wanted to. I wanted to make more money, and so uh, I started posting in the more metro areas, uh, Portland and Eugene and Salem. I would put in the description shipping only and a little disclaimer on you know I just ship these via regular mail, and I got a pretty big response. I got you know I was starting to get order after order after order just from that. And then I fell in, I fell into, um, you know, whatever you want to feel on the political, we're not going to make this political, but I started selling some, some decals that would raise conversation. And it, what that did is it allowed me to learn how Facebook works without spending a bunch of money on a course or something like that. And what it was is I would sell, I was selling political decals and everything right now, political, just causes a big storm. And so uh, I would post, <laughs> yep. Yep. Yeah, I would post one of these decals. So I'd post a very a Trump, right? I'd post a Trump decal <laughs> Now you're in, a, it. <laughs> a, yeah, in a very left city. And so uh, I would start getting reactions, negative reactions, and I would respond back with something witty. Um, I tried to never be rude or personally attack or anything like that. But what that did was that snowballed that post. And so every time somebody would post or comment on something, somebody else would comment and I could just see it grow and grow and grow. And about after about 15 to 20 messages, comments on that post, I would start getting orders via personal message until I had to turn it off and stop because I knew that I couldn't keep up and be and meet, you know, customer service stuff. And I and love so that because the question keeps being asked on the group, how do I get rid of these comments? And so we did a video I'll post it above um, to uh, show how to get rid of the comments and how to be able to read your comments. And then you had made a response uh, and said, you know, hey, uh, sometimes negative is good. It, it just kind of goes to show you that all publicity is good publicity, even when it's negative, right? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, it's, it's yeah so it, was, uh, it was fun, it kept me engaged. It, it attracted, so obviously the people commenting were not buyers. They were not a customer. So no. they were not somebody that was gonna buy something from me, but it attracted the people that were gonna buy something from me. They would see not only the product itself, but they would see the, the witty banter that would go back and forth. And uh, they would buy just to, just to, some of them literally buy just to support, you know, support me. I was dealing with this stuff. It showed me the power of social media and what just one post can generate several, you know, hundred dollars worth of stickers, like what 15 cents worth of product and maybe 10 minutes worth of time just selling stickers and just on social media. Then shortly after I got the, I got the shipping option turned on and I didn't need to use that strategy anymore. But as we're starting to see now that when I first started doing shipping comments, you didn't get comments on your items. Right. That's right. Yeah. You didn't. And now nope. all of a sudden we're getting comments and we're like, well, what happened? You know? Yeah. Yeah. So now, you know, that's kind of the same. And I think, you know, I feel like a lot of people might not post in buy sell groups because they don't want that. They, they don't want to be critiqued on whatever they might be selling, whether it's drop shipping or, you know, selling handmade stuff is really even harder because it's, you're personally attached to it. Uh, right. You put in your time and your thought and your effort to make that. And then somebody comes along and says, no, that's a piece of junk, you know? Yeah. 
and or it's it's ugly or why would anybody do that or you could buy something like that in wall at walmart or yeah. you know for cheaper yeah. why would i so, pay that much for that or you so know. we 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 shield ourselves by not posting in that and mm -hmm. when in fact it could really well be a good opportunity if you can respond to it appropriately and even a little sarcastic you know even a little with a little edge to it it's a it's a pretty big opportunity i know we're kind of you know wandering off a little bit on that but that's kind of the path that led me, you know, I, I found success. I was able to build some capital, you know, a small amount of capital to be able to fund doing drop shipping. Now I pretty much primarily do drop shipping because I can, I only have a couple hours a night to be able to manage stuff. And so I've been able to, to grow that, use those couple of hours instead of grinding out decals. Um, I'm now managing the business in a, in a different sense. Thank you for, for mentioning that because even with um, when we talk about low and no views or, you know, other problems or bugs and stuff on the system that continuous that, that are created and, and put a, a stop in our in our lives and even disrupt our income, we really find ourselves separating ourselves from the people who are determined to make something happen and those that are just going to walk away and quit. For me, I've sold for 20 years and you have too. How many times have you had to stop and pivot? And, and and totally just regroup. And to me, when you say, you know, I started drop shipping, that started taking over the stickers because it even though it was a fun project in the beginning for you and your wife, then it started to do this and then it needed to be reeled in, tamed, something else had to happen. And you figured out ways to still be able to make your business work and pivot. And so that's when you figured out how to make the drop shipping work for you, correct? Yeah. yeah. So I did a bunch of, you know, I, I dug into it and asked around and made sure that it was um, because different companies have different philosophies and policies around drop shipping. It's okay on Facebook. So if yeah. there's nothing against, uh, if you go through the rules and regulations the rules and policies, uh, there's nothing that says that you can't drop ship. And so I got to thinking, I'm like, so I, I posted a couple items and then real quick, they started selling. Uh, and I realized that, well, I can spend two hours at night grinding out decals or I can post new items and post new items and simply just fulfill orders and make 10 times more, 20 times more than what I was doing. You know, I wasn't so tied to the decal. Now, although I do miss it, my wife and I were just talking, talking to a customer I had. I've got a business set up now to where it's 95% on autopilot. I'm going to get back into making decals again just because it's a creative outlet. So. Yeah, yeah. What else we can do with Mr. Trump, right? Yeah, uh, <laughs> yeah after this week, we'll see what <laughs> a big week. <laughs> what did you do to help start alleviating some of your time so that you could be able to start going back to doing some decals sure. or other projects and stuff that you have, even especially since you already still have a full time job sure. and six kids? <laughs> yeah. yeah, absolutely. I had to give up control. I had to give up some control. Oh, um, wait, wait, what? I had to give up some control of it. So I had to hire, I hired somebody. I hired a virtual oh. assistant. Yeah. I, know what you mean. Uh, I was just kidding. Nobody <laughs> wants to give up control. Mark. No, I know. It was, <laughs> it was really hard. And it's still, I have to find myself taking a step back and saying, I don't need to be in control of this, this part of it. You know, that's my time is not as good spending controlling this part of the business versus, you know, doing something else. So to answer your question directly, I hired a virtual assistant. It started off where she did just a little bit. And now we've gotten to the point to where she manages, uh, like I said, 95% of the business. I do customer service, the, you know, interaction, the messages back and forth to customers. So what did you do to start to feel comfortable enough to give her more work? If you're just giving her a little bit at first, what did you do in the beginning? And then, you know, to make it, to make it worth your while. Generally what I did is I started off with just some things that she, there was no access. I said, I, I would like you, you know, if, if you can find 10 items, format the titles, format the pictures, format the description and have those prepared for me, I'll, I'll pay. Uh, based on a per piece per item type thing. And so we, we negotiated a, an agreement per item and we did that. Uh, I posted her items and I felt that those items sold successfully. Um, obviously, you know, without going into how items sell and all that, um, I only really needed a couple to sell to be able to get my ROI back on having her do it. Um, and if anybody product research can be extremely time consuming, especially if you're obsessive over it. Yes. Um, Agreed. Yeah. 
Yeah, there's so many rabbit holes you can go down. So then the next, so we did a couple rounds of that. And then uh, my sales were still going up. I still needed to alleviate time. The next, I allowed her access to my supplier sites. I mostly use eBay. And so I allowed her access to my, not my personal eBay account. I had another eBay account. Allowed her access to that and my PayPal account, which was already you know signed into eBay. So then the question always comes up when I'm explaining this is, well, how do you protect your funds? And what I did is I had two accounts that were connected and I would only transfer over enough to to order one or two nights worth of products at any one point now she's got access she could she take all of it um, <laughs> but I trust her. we've gotten to this point where i trust her she's given me no reason to to not and so she's she earned have, your trust basically absolutely yeah mm -hmm. yeah uh now she has access to so at that time she only had access to a small amount of the of the cash reserve to be able to buy buy products so then every night i would try she'd tell me what how much was needed. I would transfer that in to make sure she had enough, a little bit more to cover, you know, variations. We do that every single night. So she still didn't have access to my Facebook account because I was still protective of my Facebook account. So we had a system in place to where she would update a spreadsheet every day. I would go in and pull updating tracking. For example, she would update the spreadsheet with tracking. I would go in and update Facebook with the tracking information. So she still, we were actually, we did that for quite a while until we, I was growing enough to where I didn't even have time to do that. I was doing, she would locate the products and format them, but I would still list. You know, we all know listing takes a long time as well. Yes, um, it can. Yeah. Yeah. So now she has access uh, via remote desktop to my, to my Facebook, to the financial part. She's going to very shortly be doing my taxes, uh, categorizing expenses to where when I go to run my tax reports, it's all categorized and, and ready to go. So I put all of that on her and she does a, you know, an amazing job at it. So, uh, she, she expresses it's a good opportunity for her and it's changed my life. I've been able to you know earn this side money that I never thought I would be able to earn. It's, it might not be a lot to some people, but it's a lot for me. What have you been able to accomplish with the extra money? Uh, <laughs> my, uh, wife and I, so, uh, the, this first chunk that I was able to, or this first, you know, half of the year, I, I told myself I'd have fun with it. I should probably be paying down debt pay off the car soon or something like that. But, uh, my wife and I actually got to take a trip six day, six night trip, um, without kids, which was, nice. yeah. Uh, I think prior to this, uh, we had one overnight local here in town that my grandparents gave us. And then before that was the two kids in the hospital when they were being born, we had overnights in the hospital by ourselves. Oh, than, yeah, that's not a, that is definitely a, ho a hospital staycation is not a, a vacation. No, the first 12 all. hours is usually pretty calm, but then after that, it's a little hectic. So that, that was really nice. We got to go, I spent way too much money on, for, for what I would consider a trip. Uh, but it was nice to, to not have that thought of, this is money that can be used for a family trip or this is money that can be used for paying down our car note or you know front loading our christmas fund or um it was just for her and i and we haven't done very much for her and i in the last well our, our oldest is eight so yeah. well, as your kids get older it's crazy to see them they start their own families and then it just becomes you two and you're like well and now you're going to have this nice little nest egg and she's going to be like, bye, I got some grandbabies to go see. <laughs> yeah. like, now I'm coming with you. <laughs> yeah, that's, what we're, that's why we're having the big families. We want the big extended family. That'll be um, so great. Yeah, so that's, that's fun. Now it's, now it's, uh, now it's buckle down and maybe do some stuff that's more, a little bit more responsible. Um, I'm working right now on building a tax reserve so that I have enough to cover taxes in the next couple of years. That's but, actually a, a good, that's a, <laughs> That's actually really good advice to stick that aside. I've seen some people saying 20, 25% is what they would put on their profit to uh, set aside for taxes. Is that what you would yeah. think too? Uh, yes. And I, by no means I, I'm, I'm uh, it's on my to-do list to go set an appointment with uh, a tax professional, but uh, that's what I'm, I'm looking at my profit uh, and doing 20 to 30%, probably 30% in a reserve fund and then balance it out at the end of the year. So records 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 keep a spreadsheet i liked your spreadsheet have your own system but start somewhere even if it's a piece of paper and you're jotting down how much stuff costs and your expenses your you know maybe you have a subscription to the to you know 
uh, Zeek Analytics, or you have, uh, you you know, you, you mentioned you're paying for the Google Meet setup. All those are write-offs, you know, that yes. you can do in the year. So, and it's not hard. My wife does her own taxes on her small business that she does. It's it's not hard, but it can feel overwhelming. So, keep records, even if it's sticky notes. Um, do you mind if I do you mind if I backtrack just a minute because I remember a conversation that you and I had a while ago, and um, you know, when you gave me that link uh, on the spreadsheet that it goes directly to your order, and when you're doing multiple orders. And even if you're fulfilling the orders, not with the Facebook tabs, postage tabs, uh, and you're fulfilling them with like with pirate ship or something yeah. like that, how hard it can be to find those orders <laughs> in the system. And so, you know, you had uh, given me your 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 link um, to be able to to do that. And so I put that in the spreadsheet and the spreadsheet that I created, it goes right down so that you're copying and pasting exactly. So it's not like dun, 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 yeah. dun, you know, it's just right along the line. It's probably a lot, yours, yours your own spreadsheet is probably a, a lot like that too. That was like a, a huge game changer uh, to be able to have that little formula and put in there so that people can click on it and go directly to that order not any other order. If you're selling 15 cowboy shirts, which I got cowboy shirts, if you're <laughs> 15 cowboy shirts and the third person has a question about it and you need to go back to it, I can't find it. It's And that to me, I, everybody's, uh, you know, wired differently. That was stressful. Mm -hmm. I had, you know, I had a ton of orders going and both on the decal side and that, you know, and somebody calls up and says, I haven't got my order. Right. I get a message, random message might not even be connected. I got this yesterday. It's not even a message that was connected to the sale. It's just a random message that says, I, I haven't got my stuff yet, or it showed up broken or whatever it might be. Right. And to me, it was stressful trying to find that. So those little things, keeping the accurate records, even if you don't have the link, the link is great, but just to be able to search your spreadsheet and say, okay, Joe, Joe Smith ordered on the 13th. Here's his order number. Uh, at least I can go through and find the email, you know, whatever it might be. Because often you're on the fly, you're trying to do that on your phone or whatever. So, what's your last minute words uh, sure. of advice that you would give our group members? Yeah, is uh, Facebook is frustrating. You can have your own view of you know what you what you think about Facebook and the organization, and and, and it even gets into politics and how it should be. We got to remember, just like we all have our own businesses, right? We're treating these like businesses. Uh, Facebook is a business. They're platform. So if we want to work on their platform, it's so much easier to identify your constraints or your barriers or your hurdles or whatever you might, they might be and look for solutions to work around those. Be solution focused, look for solutions, identify the constraints. What can you do to work within that box that you, you know, you put up? Sometimes you got to pivot. Sometimes you got to do something different. Thank you so much yeah, for absolutely. doing this with me again. Yeah, yeah no problem. <laughs> Fine, we'll do another one maybe. I'm so. excited to show everyone my amazing friend and tell your wife thank you for letting me steal your time. Hello. If you want to join us, uh, come join us at our group at uh, FB Marketplace for sellers only. Uh, you can like and subscribe on the, the link and we'll see you at the next Super Seller Sunday. Sounds good. Thanks for having me. You're welcome.